Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Novice Way. I'm Jason and today we're going to be fixing a refrigerator. Uh, I have a GE refrigerator with the ice and water um, located in the front here and the ice isn't coming out. So you press the glass here and it sounds like it's going to happen. But nothing happens. Uh, so let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you open the refrigerator and you look inside here, there's plenty of ice. Plenty of ice being uh, being pushed down into this, but there's a flap up in here, this flap right here that won't open. So usually it opens and the ice comes out just like this, but that's not happening. So um, there's a servoid in there that um, that opens it up, and that's not working. So we're going to take apart the front of this refrigerator, and we're going to fix it. Now this repair works for most GE refrigerators and probably some other refrigerators as well, but I'm going to focus on the refrigerator I have. Now the first step is to take this border off. Uh, it just pops right off. You do have to use a little bit of elbow grease, but don't be afraid of it. You're not going to break it unless you really torque it, uh, but if you pull on it, it just kind of pops right off. The second step is to take off this control panel. Now if you lift up from the bottom, this should pull right out. So you lift up, give it a little bit of a push, and it hinges on the top. All right, now this is the control panel, and it has a lot of wires that are plugged into it. And just to get it out of the way, you want to unplug all these connectors and get this out of the way. The next step, once you have the control panel off, is to unscrew these four screws. There's one here, 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 and here. So let's do that now. All right, now that the screws are off, this hole here comes right out. And as you can see, the ice that was up there is falling down. That's okay. Um, now this unit has two pieces in it. One is the light bulb. And you see I don't have a light bulb in here. I need to replace that. And the other one is a switch that is activated when this goes back. You can actually hear it. Let me see if you can see that. So that's the switch that activates inside here is where the problem is. So you see this flap, it's right here, it's supposed to be opening. Um, the thing that opens it is this servoid. Um, whenever an electrical current is applied, it pulls down and it opens this flap. The problem is that because this is a freezer, and this is a pretty common issue, because this is a freezer, this gets cold, right? And when this gets cold and it's exposed to room temperature air like it is, uh, a lot of condensation builds up. And when the condensation turns to rust, the rust rusts out the servoid and it doesn't function anymore. So there's two options. One, you can clean the servoid, take it apart, clean it out, put it back. Um, you could do that, and, and, and frankly, um, I'd like to see, I like the comments. Uh, if, you, if you do do that, and you, you find success, then great, uh, make a comment. Um, the second option is to buy a new servoid. So that's what I did. I went on Amazon, and I'll send, I'll put a link in the description on when you can, where you can buy these. I think this was 20 something dollars, so not too expensive. This is the exact model you need. It works on any GE refrigerator, and like I said, the link will be in the description, so you can just grab it there. Uh, but that's what needs to be replaced, so let's do that. So I've unscrewed the servoid, and because it's rusted, uh, it's it's connected to this flap. So this flap, you know, goes up and down, and it's kind of hard to get that out with it being rusted. So I'm going to remove the flap as well. You can do that by unscrewing these two screws. This one right here, and this one right here. And there's metal tabs attached to both of those, and there's a spring right here. So be really careful when you're taking this off. You want to make sure to keep tabs on these metal tabs. You know, don't don't lose them and the spring will spring off. So just keep an eye on that as well. Hold it with your finger when you take it off. It's important because that's the thing that's holding it to the door and making it so it, it goes back. Um, so if that spring's gone, it'll just hang here and gravity will make it wiggle and there'll be no seal and your, your freezer won't work anymore. Bad things will happen. So just remember that spring and the two tabs when you unscrew these two screws. So I'll do that now. See, there's the screw, and there's this tab. And you see there's a bunch of rust in here, and that's because of it being so cold and being exposed to room temperature. A lot of condensation happening in this area, and so all the metal in here is rusting out. 
you might want to take some time to clean it up um, while you're in here. You don't really need to, but it's something that you, you might as well. Again, keeping track of the screw and that tab. And these tabs are both the same, so you don't really need to worry about which one goes on which side, but just make sure you keep both of them. And when I take this off, I'm gonna keep an eye on this spring by keeping my thumb on it so it doesn't spring off. And this whole thing's gonna come right down. There we go. And now that this sort of void is off, we're gonna take it all off at the same time. All right. Okay, here's the flap and the servoid assembly. So I'm just gonna take this flap and push to the side. I wanna show you the servoid. It is pretty rusty. Uh, let's see if I'm getting a good shot of that. Yeah, you see how rusty that is? Uh, and this thing really isn't moving. Um, there's a basically an electromagnet in here that pulls this down every time an electrical current is applied. And because it's so rusty, it's not moving. I can move it with a pair of pliers uh, and I can take it out and you can see just how rusted it is. Uh, like I said, you can clean this out and you can clean this with uh, maybe sandpaper and get some sandpaper in the hole and clean it out, get some oil and oil it up. Um, I would just choose to replace it. It's 20 bucks. Um, you won't have to touch it again for another 10 years just worth it in my opinion but definitely salvageable if you want to do it on the cheap for sure. I'm going to install this one now and put the flap back on the fridge. Now when installing this one you don't have to install the flap and this at the same time like you did when you took it off because this one's not rusted. It's sitting there nice and easy like so this pulls out super easy. So I'm just going to leave this out for now and install the flap and then I'll install this after the flap. Again, this flap has a has this spring, so if the spring fell off, that's okay. Just make sure you keep an eye on it. I'm sure you could buy it online if you lose it, but best not to lose it. Um, if you can see, this spring has a hook right there. You can see that? And that hook goes into this hole right here. And so the spring goes around that leg, and the hook goes into the hole. So if it fell off, that's how you put it back on. Okay, so I'm gonna screw this back on to the to the freezer. And to do that, all you have to do is attach this. It pops in, let's see if we can get a good shot of that. It pops in, so it kind of holds itself there. Uh, again, you wanna make sure this spring doesn't fall off. And this arm of the spring is goes on the ceiling, so you wanna push it up into the ceiling when you do this. But I'm gonna get the spring in there push it up and then these arms just click in and stay there. So now that that's sitting there, I'm going to screw those two screws in, uh, make, making sure to remember to put the tabs back in. So these tabs, so they go in like that with a screw in the bottom and then there was a plastic tab that fits in there. I'm gonna see if I can get a better shot. All right, here's a nice close up shot of that placement. So the tabs just go in right here, like like that. Okay, now the flap's back on. I got the two screws in with the tabs and the spring. Uh, it's time to put the servoid back in. Now, as you can see, there's three screws for the servoid. I didn't really film taking that off, and I apologize. But there's three screws, uh, two at the bottom and one on top. And if you can see, I've left that screw in because the way this goes in is it has the two holes in the bottom and then a slot on the top. So you can seriously just put it in to the slot and that's a lot easier than taking the screw out and having to screw it back in. This also comes out. So the first thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna take this out and we're going to attach it to this arm by hooking it. Now, the way this is, if you can see, there's a hook at the end of that and this just goes right on the hook. It just hangs there. Okay, now that we have that piece hanging on the hook, we're going to take this the, the body of this servoid and we're going to just insert this piece into it, into this hole right here. So much easier to do when you don't have a camera in your way. I'm trying to get a shot of me doing it so you can see what I'm talking about. But essentially, you just take it, Put it in there like that. Wow, that's really blurry. All right, because that screw's still in there on the back, it's real easy to just kind of insert it and let the servoid hang there. 
And so it's not lining up at the bottom. That's easy enough. You just push it up to line up the screws. And I'm gonna zoom out to do that because this is getting really blurry and I don't think you guys are getting a good shot of this. So you have to screw this in. The top screw is already in. And I'm just gonna push up to align the bottom screw holes and I'm gonna put the screws in. I usually just hold the screw like this on the screwdriver, uh, but it might not be able to because it's such a tight hole. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna just screw it in. And I won't tighten it all the way because I want to put all the screws on before I tighten it all the way. So I'm gonna put this third screw in. And now that this one's in, I'm going to tighten this one all the way. And then you go around and tighten the other two. All right, now we have the flat back on and the servoid back in. So everything looks like it did when we first took it apart. And now all we have to do is put it back together and it should work just fine. So there's two major pieces to put back together. There's this assembly, which is the switch for the ice machine. And then there's the control panel that goes in front of it. So I'm just going to screw this back in, and again, there's four screws that go on the face of this, and it just goes right back in. Next step is to reconnect the control panel, and it should be as simple as taking all the wiring and plugging them back in here. I didn't get the best shot of this, uh, taking them apart, but this four prong goes into the last slot here. This big one goes into the middle, and it's kind of hard to tell because there's two of them, but it goes right into here. Just goes bink. And then this one, which is actually the servoid, uh, just plugs in right at the end. And if, again, if you order the one I sent you the link to, the connector's perfect. It, it matches the old one, uh, so there's no issue with that one. All right, and so now that it's connected, you can see all the, the buttons light up. Uh, it should work just fine, but we're gonna put it on here. And again, we do that by first, uh, inserting the top into the slot area here. So there's a slot here and sort of a receiving slot here. You can just push it up into it and once you get a little bit of pressure up, it should clip in the bottom just fine and stay right there. Next step is to put the facing back. And again, that just pops right on. It should be super simple. And of course, the very last step, making sure it works. So cube dice, wish me luck. Yeah, very good. Thanks for joining me here at The Novice Way. I hope this video was useful. And if you have any questions about the process or any of the things I, I did in the video, please feel free to leave those in the comments. I am very active on YouTube and I'd be happy to answer those questions. If you found a different way of doing this, I'd love for you to put that in the comments as well so I can learn. And uh, you know, if you found it useful, please give me a thumbs up and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye. Ah, cold beverage.